Hi guys, this is Alana. You are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast with me and my great friend Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? It's going very well. I am having a good, it's a beautiful day. I thought it was going to rain today and then it turned out to be another beautiful day. In the neighborhood? Beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, I haven't seen that movie with Tom Hanks uh-huh. about Mr. Rogers. I want to see that. I kind of do, but I know it's going to make me sob my heart out. And so right. It why is. I put myself through it. <laughs> it definitely will. Hey, I want to show you something. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube and those of you that don't know that we're on YouTube, if you're listening like on iTunes or whatever podcast thingy you're listening on, um, we also have a YouTube channel where you can watch us. Most of our, most of our episodes get up there. Um, and so I got this in the mail. I'm going to hold it up here from our good friend Pam Fields at tendingfields.net. Aww. We interviewed her. So yeah. she makes these prayer bracelets with with kids right, names with the them. names and there's so your kids. She made my kids names and it has been so neat. Like I I thought it would be good for me, but my mm-hmm. kids have loved it. They're like, "What are those bracelets? Why do they have our names on them?" And so now they know that I'm praying for them and they can see like as they know like my middle kid was asking about this last night like so they're all on that wrist. Does that mean that you've prayed for me or that you haven't prayed for me yet? And so they know now that like if, when it's on my left wrist, it means I haven't prayed yet. And then when I transfer over to my right wrist, that that means I've prayed for them that day. So they've been really excited seeing as they get transferred, they'll look and their eyes light up like, yeah, that's awesome. Isn't that cool? Aww. I just have Wouldn't to remember. Bad. Like, can you imagine? Like, let's fast forward thirty years, and like, one of your kids is in therapy, and like, yeah, my brother and sister always had their bracelets moved to the other wrist before mine was. <laughs> right. I was just thinking about that, or like, I was tempted the other day because I, I, I was like, oh my, they're all on this wrist. Should I just quickly put them, them all right to make sure? <laughs> not. I have not. But what it did, it made me pray for them all right away, so that yeah. I could it could be a minute prayer for each kid or a 30 mm-hmm, second mm-hmm. prayer for each kid, but it's been cool. I've loved this. So thank you, Pam That's Fields cool. at tendingfields.net. If you want to head over there, she's got a lot of great blog posts with ideas for just parenting and mm-hmm. prayer reminders. She's got another really neat shower, um, like on the shower, she'll laminate her like Bible verses. Uh-huh. And once they're laminated, they self stick to the tile. Mm-hmm, of the shower. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. And she was on the podcast. I don't know what number that episode was, but I can, you know, get back to that at some point, but yeah, it was fun. That is awesome. Well, I feel like since you and I are getting into a little bit more of a like batching ahead, I feel like we need to put a disclaimer that if the world has gone like even worse, um, we don't know it yet. (laughs) So that's right. The next couple episodes, we're, we're starting to record ahead again. My family has a move coming up the end of June. We're going to be moving to another more rural Alaskan community. We're all excited about it. But so I just feel like um, since things are changing, like almost daily with current events, I just wanted to point out like we haven't experienced it yet. So hello from the past. I hope things are going okay when you hear this. It's like a time capsule. Doesn't that feel great? It's like a little like a time capsule. So, yeah. Today is June sixteenth, and it's sunny, and there is toilet paper in the stores, and (laughs) yeah, it's we're in a good place right now. I think. Oh, huh. Debatable, but no. (laughs) Well, hopefully, hopefully, when this airs, we'll be in an even better place. Okay, we're in a good place. Yeah, I feel like now I'm saying that. And unconsciously, I was anticipating that things will get worse in the future. So isn't that terrible that I'm just assuming, yeah, we're in a great place now for you, like listening, you know, apocalyptically several weeks (laughs) later. That's lame. So forgive me for that assumption. I'm going to pray and expect that things will get better from here. Fabulous. is, yeah. And, And whether it looks good or bad, wherever you're coming from and listening to this in, God is in it. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's open with a word of prayer and then dive in. Let's do it. God, we just praise you that you're in everything. You're at work, you're moving. Any movement is good movement when when it's when it comes to having the perspective of a child of God because we know that you are in everything, that you promise to be at work in everything to bring about your good purposes. 
and, and the good purposes for those that love you who are called according to your purposes. So thank you, God, for that. We just praise you for being on the throne. We thank you for this podcast. We're going to be kind of celebrating this podcast today. And we, um, you know, take people behind the scenes of the Praying Christian Women podcast. And we thank you, God, for the opportunity that Alana and I have had to do this and to be involved in this ministry and to grow our friendship, to grow our partnership, to grow individually and collectively. And um, we just pray that this would be a fun time to sort of look behind the scenes and um, just give you glory for some of the really amazing ways that you've guided us along the way over the years and gotten us to um, to where we are now and, and that you continue to direct us down the path. We just pray for each of our listeners, be with them in whatever they're going through today, God, whatever struggles, whatever joys, that you would be present and just reveal yourself to them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have to apologize. I may have had a muting accident. Did you hear me sh shouting at the kids? No, I didn't. Oh, good. Okay. So <laughs> you were praying. I muted. And then I, I I didn't shout, like angry shout. I was like, hey, guys, shut your door because my son's <laughs> chatting with your son and they get so loud. <laughs> so I called out to them, shut your door. And then I came back and I must have like um, automatically unmuted. Right. And, and then I saw that it wasn't muted. I'm like, oh, great. Everybody heard me yelling. <laughs> no, we did not. We did but it not was not that. an angry yell. So okay. I feel, I at least feel good about that. No confession <laughs> necessary there. Well, you know what? We didn't confess before we jumped on the air. Should we do a candid confession? We didn't. That would be good. Uh, let me do the verse of the day first, because this is kind of funny. Okay. So I did it as kind of a joke. I have a joke, like warning <laughs> verse of the day for you. Now. And I've got a like actual verse of the day. So my, oh, so okay. in case you hadn't gathered from my, my prayer where I like to slip in the, t the topic of the day. Cause um, you're the spoiler. Right. I'm the spoiler. Um, but this is a behind the scenes of the praying Christian women podcast episode where we're going to just have kind of a fun, like look at what we do here, what we've done in the past and do some fun questions. But so my verse of the day, I was going to say Proverbs 22, 24 to 25 <laughs> warning to Alana, do not oh, no. make friends with a hot tempered person <laughs> referring to myself, not you. Oh, oh, good. Yeah. I thought this warning. was a subtle, not warning. subtle jab. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a jab at myself. Don't make friends with a hot tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared Ooh. because I am hot tempered. I put up a really good front. I've got a great mask that I wear in front of, you know, the world at large. <laughs> but when it comes to like my kids, my husband, I let it all out sometimes. See, and I do struggle with a hot temper. Me. No, I know. you never lost your temper at me. And that means that I'm not, you know, I'm not family to you if you haven't, you know, ripped <sighs> into me. <laughs> Shoot, I'm gonna have to do Maybe that just shut your door just to prove <laughs> that I'm hot tempered. You know, I don't even know if I would consider myself hot tempered. I simmer like really well for oh, a while, but I get yeah. to the boiling point. So I think mm -hmm. it's just that I think you're just not an inflammatory person. I think that's why. That's what it is. That's you're what not, it is. Yeah. I'm a. <laughs> I'm the ice. You're the fire. Is that <laughs> maybe? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, I know I've talked about it before, but one of my most embarrassing, frustrating, and annoying kind of idiosyncrasies is that if I'm mad at somebody, my tendency is to giggle. Or like if I'm really, really uncomfortable, I giggle. And so it's it's hard yeah. to have a fight when you're, you know, trying not to giggle. <laughs> yeah, no, I could totally see that. Or And it would be disarming for the other person too, if they're getting angry. Unless they you're might my feel husband. Like you're... Oh, he hates it. I've, I've learned to not do it around him because I mean, it's terrible. You're mad at him. Does he feel like you're laughing at him or does yes. he just feel like you're not No, like he's me. like, yeah. no, it's like, you don't think this is serious. You're laughing like, no, I'm just so uncomfortable with confrontation. <laughs> yes. Yes. I get it. Well, the real verse, though, that I, I wanted to bring up is Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. I really I feel like your friendship is very much in that category of sharpening, and you know, just I feel like that's a huge blessing. So, this podcast sure. has has facilitated that that regular contact, and you know, like we talked about confession, and that mm -hmm. could lead us into our impromptu confession if Let's you want. Let's do it. Okay. You first. <laughs> I'll no. start. Yeah, yeah, no, because I was thinking about it because I knew we were going to be recording. Like, yeah, I've got a yeah. lot to confess to Jamie. It's been I while. probably do too. So, <laughs> but you know, like I've um, had a good couple weeks. I feel like I'm out of the um, 
kind of creative funk I was in with the worst of the quarantine and things like that. And so things started going really, really well. And then we started packing yesterday and today I'm just like my brain and body have thrown in the towel like by 9 30 in the morning they had thrown in the towel there were like probably three times where I was ready to pick up the phone and text you like can we record another day and like oh I'm not sick I might be a little tired but it's I'm just <sighs> I'm not sick I'm a little tired and I'm sick and tired no. <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> yeah so this is where I announced that I'm just done podcasting with you, Jamie. This this is going to be my last episode. Um, and this is where I blow up at you. And then you right. realize how great our friendship really <laughs> is. <right. laughs> well, you know, okay, we have to tell everybody. So Jamie and her family came over uh, last week and we were having a great visit. The kids were having tons of fun. The daughter was playing with our puppy. Like life was so happy so good and then all of a sudden your youngest son and my youngest son man did they go at it Aww. and you know so it was kind of like let's yeah time to go <laughs> good happy feelings gone but like that was my very first reaction it's like my son has a friend that he is so comfortable with that they can have a major blow up at each other and it's been i don't know that we've ever had <laughs> that he gets you know that into it with so yeah hey. well and I think it's funny because it took me back because when they were little when we first met and they were toddling around with each other you know like they would mm -hmm. have spats like that mm -hmm. and kind of tussle mm -hmm. like brothers and yeah mm -hmm. yeah well yeah and my my younger son is definitely he he's emotional he's very um like he wears his heart on his sleeve mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. you know go quietly into the <laughs> yeah. go gentle into the minivan <laughs> yes exactly so maybe that yeah anyway it yeah. was it was an explosive combination one of those like, almost no fault things it just it it happened yeah, they just, yeah. and they're fine now they they were yeah. fine oh, yeah. hours now later yeah oh, yep. yep 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 so that's a that's kind of my confession is just yeah being really blah and then you know it's one of those things where i know the things that i could do to kind of try to set myself out of it and i'm just not doing those you know like mm -hmm. i could have gotten up and gotten on a walk and gotten moving i could have listened to a funny podcast and you know gotten laughing i could have taken a nap like <laughs> there were a lot of things i could have done and instead i'm like refreshing facebook and like this is such a long day <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that funny because oh uh, so my confession is that i I've gotten into this habit through what my kids have come to call the Corona break. I don't, I don't know why they call it that, but they're like, instead the, of like spring break, is that what you mean? Like the break? Right. From school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Just the break from school. They're like, so during Corona break, we've been blah, 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 whatever. And they mm -hmm, still, mm -hmm. it's like this extended Corona break, even though it's our state has reopened and life is very much going back to, you know, some semblance of normalcy. But, um, but during Corona break, I got in the habit of, just kind of being absorbed by my family's needs and assuming okay. that, okay, that's what we need to do. And, you know, but I don't know. I think I use that in it as an excuse to be, mm -hmm. to be productive. And uh, mm -hmm. you would think I saw this thing on Facebook. So the first couple of weeks of um, Corona break, I got kind of the house in order. I felt like I was maintaining mm -hmm. a lot of systems and things. And then all of a sudden, then I wasn't. And I saw this thing on Facebook that said, I thought my house was a mess because I'm never home. I guess that <laughs> wasn't true. Right. And so, you know, I've just got, there are a lot of organizing projects that I could be working on, but I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reverting to, let me just refresh Facebook. Part of it is I'm looking for puppy updates. So I'm obsessively oh. refreshing my, <laughs> we're getting our puppy like in less than two weeks. So I'm so excited for you guys. I am too, but it's, um, yeah, it, I have, I've reverted to this, just, I'll just call it laziness. And it's, it's a, Hey, and I, it's making, I can even hear the excuses in my mind of like, well, Hey, you know, my family needs me or I need to do mm -hmm. this or I'm, I'm, I'm mentally engaged in this thing, but I, and I've been doing some like project things if they're in front of me, like we've been doing a lot of projects around the house and building our deck and stuff. And I've been doing that stuff, but the self-motivated productivity yeah. is not emerging strongly mm -hmm. and I'm going to call that laziness and I'm going to call it um at this point now that it's been brought to my attention I, I specifically feel like God has been asking me recently 
to focus more on productivity, both home and ministry. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just been doing what's in front of me that has to get done and nothing more. And I have so yeah. much more to give. And so that's disobedience. So those are my, mm -hmm. I think that's my biggest confession right now. I think a lot of people are going to have to like, eventually we all need to stop using the pandemic as an excuse. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that with church. We haven't gone back to church yet. And technically, you know, our state is allowing it to happen. I'm still not 100% comfortable just in terms of like, you know, public health safety reasons. I don't, you know, we can, we can join in through Facebook Live, which is what we do. But I also recognize that it's going to be kind of easy for me to make that an excuse indefinitely, mm -hmm. which probably isn't all that smart <laughs> or good. <laughs> No, we've been going through that same thing of really trying to examine our motives and our reasons mm -hmm. and, you know, because we have not returned to collective church either, even though, you know, it is allowed. Um, mm -hmm. And we have some reasons we've, you know, that we, that we're trying to be careful in that arena. Though right. things that yeah. we've allowed our kids to do have been things that involve protection, distancing, right. you know, but um, like as far as indoor group stuff, that's kind mm -hmm. of in our mind. But then we look at the number of cases. We look at, you know, like basically we've been going through some of that. My husband mm -hmm. actually did sound this last week. He was, mm -hmm. uh, he was on the schedule for sound and I haven't returned to children's ministry. So we're going through that too. Just not yeah. wanting at this point, like right this moment, I don't feel like there's a disobedience going on. Exactly. Like, but I don't but want it's it gonna to be pretty easy. Yeah. Like what's the end game? Am I just are we never going to church again? Like what what's this gonna look yeah, like? So <laughs> I bet yeah, I bet everybody is going through the same kinds of decisions on mm -hmm, all different mm -hmm. levels of what to do, what not to do, what to participate in, what yep. not to. So yeah, we yeah. can definitely be praying for wisdom. For sure. For sure. Well, our just for fun, we have a couple. This is going to be fun. And there, the numbering got really weird. So number one is number one. The next number one is number two. <laughs> and so I can, on and I can so figure forth. it out. Yeah, yep. you go right ahead. Do you know what my husband always gets on me? I, I never knew that I did this until he started pointing it out every time I do it. I do it like once or twice a week. <laughs> So I'll be like, if I'm listing out pros and cons, for example, I'll be like, okay, so number one is this, B is this, <laughs> <laughs> and it's always that, it's always number one, and then B, it's never like A, and then number two, it's always number one, and then that's it's B. <laughs> funny. Oh my gosh, that's funny. All right, number one, have you ever had to dispense bear spray? Oh, did we explain where these questions came from? Oh, so... These questions, we sent out an email to our newsletter subscribers, and we put a uh, notice on our Facebook, our Praying Christian Women community private Facebook group. So it's okay. basically listeners and friends of the podcast. So if you, yeah, <laughs> if you're in, if you're in the know with us, you saw this call for questions. So this is <laughs> going to be a fun one. Have you ever had to dispense bear spray? B. Any close encounters with creatures of the tundra? <laughs> Love it. Now, that could be accurate, though, because that's kind of all one question. So it's it question is. 1A and 1B. Yes. So, yeah, I like that. 1A. You, do that. you ever dispense bear spray? I never have. No, I've never had to and hope never to have to. What's your have closest you? bear encounter? There was a bear on our street. The kids were playing mm -hmm. in the yard I and it was, that, yeah. yeah, I think the bear ended up getting like 15, 10 to 15 feet away from one of our kids Ooh. just lumbering down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very close. It was a black bear and it was very yeah. uninterested as most black mm -hmm. bears are. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be less aggressive than brown bears or grizzlies, yes. however you want to call them. Um, that was our first closest. And I'd say our second closest was at my daughter's picnic. We had a preschool picnic at one of the local parks. Mm -hmm. um, and we got there early to help set up with some of the teachers. And the kids were playing on the playground. There were only a few kids there, my kids and like two others. And so we're bringing stuff from the parking lot up to the pavilion area, which was quite a distance. And at one point, um, my daughter, who was like, you know, 
four or five at the time, mm -hmm. yelled, bear. Oh, and wow. There had been a sign that said that there was a bear sighted several days in a row, a black mm -hmm. bear. And we thought, well, there'll be a bunch of us. And yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she had a tendency to yell bear because she thought it was funny. And I oh, always would no. be like, oh, don't do that because one day there that. really is going to be a bear. Right. <laughs> Nobody's so, going to believe you. <laughs> so as, she, as soon as she screamed it, I yelled at her. I was like, oh, don't, don't say that. And then I looked and sure enough, oh, no. like maybe half a football field away, just kind of okay. in the field grazing down. It mm -hmm. wasn't close enough to be a close call. Yeah. Yeah. But it ended up, I left all of the food that oh. I carried <laughs> in the uh -huh. pavilion and I kind of corralled the kids and took them down to the parking lot to wait for the wildlife patrol or whatever the mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. wildlife patrol. um she uh, and so she was so upset because i had left the cupcakes that she had picked up. <laughs> that bear took the cupcakes and i wasn't there i was with the kids but a couple uh -huh. of people stayed to keep an eye on it and it yeah. wandered up to the pavilion oh man it opened we had one set of like the cupcakes in the like the regular size in the big mm -hmm. plastic clamshell mm -hmm. container it yeah opened the container and ate one by one ate the cupcakes out of it then it went to the other container that she had picked out of the tiny mini cupcakes yeah it couldn't open the clamshell so it grabbed it and it and it was like wrestling with the clamshell trying to open it uh -huh. finally it took it in its mouth and like went back into the woods with the with the oh, cupcake oh wow yeah. okay i have to ask so did it did it leave the cupcake paper like was it a very dainty eater like it ate I, around the you know what i don't remember <laughs> no, i don't think so though i don't remember that would be funny. <laughs> but i don't think it did i don't think it did i think it just ate the whole thing but i can't remember so we have a bear encounter and we have a bear spray encounter. Thankfully, Ooh. not the same story. Yeah. So our bear encounter, I was taking the kids on a little hike. So this is way back when we lived in Anchorage and there was a high school near our house that we'd go and walk the trail. It, you know, it was like their cross country running trail. And everybody was super young to the point where at least one was in the stroller and it might have been back when I was doing a double stroller. And we had heard all of the bear um, training, you know, you don't run, you don't turn your back, you make yourself look big and you just, you say, hey bear, and then you just kind of, you know, back up. Is ever, like, we had been told that 18 million times. <laughs> I'm with my kids. I see this, it's a mama black bear and two little baby black bears. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe 10 feet away. Like we oh. turn the corner and it's like, boom, they're there. <laughs> like all the training just disappeared. Basically, it was grab my hands and we're running. <laughs> and it didn't follow us. It didn't like we didn't spook it, thankfully, because I know that's no good. But yeah, and then I got in the car. I'm like, oh, that's not how I was supposed to respond. <laughs> but thankfully, it worked. Yes, yes, we were fine. I was surprised at how little it was. Like black bears oh, are, yeah. are tiny. You know, you think of a bear and you think of this huge thing. Like right, probably, they're like a huge dog. I know, I know. I'm thinking like there's probably some types of dogs that are just as big um, as this black bear was. But yeah, so that was our bear experience. And then, um, oh, our bear spray. <laughs> so this was a couple some couple summers ago. We had moved into a new house and. <laughs> I don't know if it's like this in cities, actually, because it's been so long since we lived in cities, but like living out rural, basically, like moving into a new house means you inherit all the junk in the garage. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case, like where, where like, you know, civilized people. Live. It just, it depends. I think okay. it just depends on the house because we've had both types of experiences where it's been stripped clean and then other times where we get there and it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Help Whether yourself. We've yeah, whether we've rented or bought, it's okay. we've had different levels of that. Okay, so I'm upstairs doing my thing, and I hear the kids, like, screaming, crying. You know what? It was a summer that you and I were making plans to launch Praying Christian Women, and so we were probably, like, we might have even been on the phone. Like, I know we were in, like, daily conversations at this stage. My kids are screaming, crying. My middle son, because of his health things, um, like day to day, he's fine, but the the way it's put medically is he doesn't have a productive cough. So like if he needs to cough something out, it doesn't work very well. Mm. And I hear him say, I'm dying, I'm dying. And so I run out in the garage. They had been playing in the garage and there was this big old thing of air spray. 
And wow. it's one of those, like, what was in your brain? I don't know. Like, who knows oh. what was in their brain? But it was like, oh, look, here's a can of something. Let's spray it. And so oh. thankfully, it did not get in contact with their skin. Um, one of them, when he took his shirt off, it irritated his eyes. But thankfully, like, it wasn't directly on the skin. But it, man, did it irritate their um it was to the point like their eyes were watering so much they couldn't really see. They weren't, they were just kind of in a panic. So they didn't know to leave the garage. Right. And or it what was it was. Bad. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so I came out, I got them in, I called poison control. Cause that was my first thing. Like, I don't know what to do with this. What should I do? And so they said, just take off their clothes, you know, rinse off in cool water. And then she wanted me to go into the garage to like, look at the label so that they could see exactly what it was. And even just like, you know, minutes later, just walking into the garage for, you know, five seconds. It was so hard. I was hacking. It was bad. Oh, because I mean, it's basically pepper spray. I mean, it's Super basically concentrated really pepper concentrated spray. pepper spray. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But thankfully they're okay. <laughs> but again, well, it was one of those like, what were you thinking? And you can't really ask the question because there's no answer. Like there, there literally is no answer. It was, here's a, here's a spray can. Let's see what's in it. There's a big orange button and it just could yeah. not squeeze it i'm actually impressed that they figured out how to get the guard off of it because i even yeah, trying yeah, like to figure mechanics. it out it's not easy so they mm -hmm. actually yeah kudos mm -hmm. <laughs> and what not everyone that doesn't live in alaska or somewhere where there are moose knows is that that grammar was probably totally wrong but what not everyone knows is that <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. If moose, you don't live in Alaska, you don't know that. You might that. not know that <laughs> moose are actually more dangerous than bears yes. and yes. they are responsible for more deaths and they are very cute. I mean, you see them and they look like they don't care that you're there for the most part. Mm -hmm. Mo nope, moose. They care. <laughs> don't even care. They, you, right? And you go and it looks like they don't even know you're there. They look like a big cow sitting there chewing the bark mm -hmm. or the whatever. But mm -hmm. they will get very aggressive, and particularly if they have calves nearby or if it's a bull mm -hmm. that's in rut, like you do not want to mess. And so um, my husband has had some very close moose encounters where he's been. Oh, when he was been on his bike? Mountain biking. Way? And it's Ooh. always the encounters that he has had have been mostly mountain biking, mostly when it's been like dusk, like in the fall or the yeah. spring when we're starting mm -hmm. to get, or I'm, yeah, is that right? Yeah. When you still have some evening where it yep. gets dark um, and they just, that's kind of the witching hour for them. I think they're yes. afraid of predators at that time, mm -hmm. maybe, and, or they can't see as well, yeah. but he, he's, I think three times now he's gotten to the point where he will come up quickly on a moose. Mm. Um, twice it's been bulls. And once it was a mom with babies, all three times he was pursued. And two of the three times he was uh, one time with the mama, she reared up and tried to stomp and trample. Oh. And he it's turned scary. around and went as fast as he could the other way. Um, and she stopped and stayed with her babies. The, the one huge bull moose didn't try to trample, just charged immediately, no warning. And he was able to get away and it stopped. Then there was this young bull moose with just small antlers. And that one followed him and his buddy for like a quarter of a mile or something. Wow. They were like booking it up a hill and the, the moose actually up a hill. gaining on them. And oh, scary. They were terrified. So moose are, and we've seen some, they're around our house all the time. And so mm -hmm. there've been times when the kids, hit, when Eva was like, I don't know, one or two, she must've been two, but she just started screaming and crying and pointing because they were all playing outside in the snow and it was a moose and my biggest <laughs> son grabbed her and took her up real quick and they all got inside. But yeah, but they can be, some of them care, some of them don't, but you got to assume yeah. they all care. Well, should we share the story of my kid at your house? Oh, that was, oh, oh my goodness. That was <laughs> priceless. Why did I not think of that? Do you want to tell it or you want me? You were there. So I'll, okay. I'll give the, the layup. So my husband and I, well, my husband had a business trip in San Diego last year. I went with him and our kids hung out for the week at Jamie's. <laughs> so that's the, um, that's the setup, <laughs> the backstory. So uh, Alana's kids are homeschooled, so they weren't going back and forth to school. My kids, I had to take them to school that morning. And we had a neighbor friend that comes over in the mornings that we also take over to school. And the school is like 
30 seconds away by car. Mm -hmm. So we were all getting ready to get in the car and I went outside and opened the car and got it started. And I said, okay, kids run out, get in the car. I'll be right there. And I had to go get something, whatever. I don't know, something I needed on the way. And when I got back out, they were all like kind of flustered and sort of talking. And the little girl that comes over to our house was like, like, like lying, leaning <laughs> on Alana's youngest and, and like, just like, kind let of him go. Yeah. snuggled up to him kind of. And I was like, what is going on here? And she said, he saved me from the moose. And I was like, what do you mean? So apparently this moose, which I then saw that had been around the house, had walked up as they were getting into the car and Alana's youngest like pushed her into the car real quick because the moose was coming around to the side of the car. And then he got in next to her and she was like, my hero. Like she so thought cute. he was the greatest, but she was like giving him looks and like hugging him. <laughs> and if I only had the look on his face, captured, oh, the poor guy, he was like, he didn't know what to do. And, and it he was, was adorable. Yeah. yeah so he was, he was not super comfortable. I don't think with <laughs> the situation. So I'm hanging out in San Diego. This is my first time out of state without the kids. My husband's in classes all day. Like I had the like introverts paradise vacation, right? So I'm just hanging out during the day. Like nobody's shouting mom, blah, blah, blah. So I get this text from my son and no punctuation, no capitalization. Mom, I saved the Hamptons friend from a moose and now she won't let go of me. And I think she's in love with me and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> So yes. we even went into this whole thing, like I, I, there, I'm sure there is a name for it, but I like, I tied in like, you know, how people think they're in love with firefighters, you know, cause it's, it's such a stressful thing. And like, the, yeah, I, we went into the entire psychology of it. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> it was really funny though. Oh yeah, it definitely, it, it was, it was very cute. And I think he approached me the next day before she came and was like, how do I handle this? Aww. And but, Maybe. and it was fine. It all worked out fine. We explained to her that he wasn't comfortable, but she was not, she, she did not let up the next day. You know, the next day she was yeah. still in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's hilarious. It was cute, but yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, our only real dramatic, well, we have a couple dramatic, everybody's gotten this story. The, the one that was the most, um, well, one was really, really scary. And one was just really, really, it was slightly scary and really annoying. We went on a guided hike in, um, what's in Kincaid and there were like maybe eight of us. It was, it was like four little ish kids. You know, we were going to walk down to the water, walk back up. The hike itself was scheduled to take like an hour, like 20 minutes to walk down to the water, 20 minutes to hang out, 20 minutes to walk back. Everything's going fine. But when it's time to walk back, there's a moose lying in the middle of the trail. So we've got a guide and she's like, you know what? If it was me, I'd be fine. But we've got little kids here. Let's just, I know another way around. It's a little longer, but we'll just go this other way around. Okay. This happened like, I think six times that we had to change our route because the moose were just out and none of them cared. None of them got aggressive, but it was so long when you've got these little kids. It was like, I think it was supposed to be like maybe two to three and it was 5.30 by the time we got to the car. It was a long. Especially with little kids too, that are exactly. like hungry and tired. Yeah, it's and like, it's snack time. It's, oh this was goodness. not what we planned. And then the, the scary time, I was almost in tears. We were pretty new to Alaska. Like it was in our first couple years. And I had just brought my son home from one of his therapy appointments. It was just him and me. And it was back, he was in a car seat and he had medical equipment we had to carry. And we lived in this apartment where it was like a big old long kind of, not driveway, but like a big, we had to walk up a hill outside to get to our door. And there was a moose like right where I park. And you know, like I was, I was flustered. I was stressed. I was still like, we were probably, you know, just a few months out of coming home from our NICU stay. And so I mm -hmm. called my husband, he was still home. I'm like, there's a moose. I don't know what to do. And he, you know, so he just stood at the door and kind of tried to distract it. But I was, I was very scared, even though like really it, it was just there. It wasn't acting aggressive, but. Right. But when you have a baby, you know, exactly. it's very yeah. different, very different. Yeah, for sure. 
Yep. All righty. There's our, uh, that's probably more bear moose stories than anybody expected. Yeah. Well, I've, you know, they just kept coming. Okay. Real quick. I think this will be interesting for our lower 48 listeners or non-Alaska listeners. How many bear attack survivors do you know? Uh, I know of one. But I oh, don't that's know him personally. No, oh, okay. I just know of one. Oh, two, two. I know of two. Okay, but not directly. Yeah, we yeah, have but not two. Directly, just like people that that my husband has contact with. Oh, okay. Yeah, work. my husband works with one, and then um, someone from one of our previous churches also. Wow. So yeah. Wow. So you know up close and personal. Yeah, I mean there. everybody at, at the very least everybody's at least one person removed. I think from a from a bear attack survivor. Yeah. Well, we're actually about to go down to the Russian River on Monday. We mm -hmm. leave to go for a few days for salmon fishing. And mm -hmm. I didn't even bring up those, but I mean, you're going to see brown bears. Oh, for sure. And yeah. they will share the water with you and mm -hmm. they'll be fishing like just down but the But they're not hungry because they got all the salmon they want. So I actually feel <laughs> the only thing I'm ever afafraid of when I'm there is that I'll sneak up on one or that there'll yeah. be like a mama with cubs or something that's going to, mm -hmm. you know, be aggressive. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I feel safer with being like fishing in the river where they're able mm -hmm. to just go and fish because they really don't seem like they care. I don't think no. there's, I can't think of anyone that I know of that has been attacked by a bear while just fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One of those funny stories. All right. Well, moving on from bear spray, moose and bear attacks, what is one food that you can't stand? So I have the, the one big one for me is a fruit called lychee. It's, yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever had it. So I think the first time I had it was in a Chinese restaurant. So I don't know if it's like a Chinese fruit, but it's um, the way that it was prepared, it was either poached or canned or something. So it was like slimy and soft. Yeah. yeah. And it just wasn't that the flavor was like sickeningly syrupy sweet mm -hmm. and the texture was disgusting. And so I've always had that in my mind as a food that I cannot stand. Mm -hmm. um, the other one that I can think of is um, uh, a girl came to uh, my office one time at the lab I was working at with lunch and she had like this, like, basically a fermented egg. It's like, with a oh yeah, Scott's, it. yeah, Scott's had those. Yeah. I wouldn't even try it. I'll try anything, but I, I would not bring myself mm -hmm. to try that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I would not like it, but I just, yeah. Ugh. In a funny way though, isn't it strange that like you'll eat chicken and you'll eat right. eggs, but the thought of eating an egg with a chicken and it really is like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just a funny, it funny, funny. I'm sure if we grew up eating it, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. It wouldn't, but well, I I'm, love oh, everything ahead. else. I, I'm, I'm not yeah. a picky eater. I'll eat just about anything. Yeah. I am super un-American in that like pizza for me is just, it's the go-to when there's absolutely nothing else and you just need something quick. I don't, I don't care for it. You don't like pizza. Uh, <clears throat> don't like pizza. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good, I like, what's the take and bake? Is that Papa Murphy's? Those yeah. can be okay. But again, it's never like, man, I want some good pizza. Nope. Um, same thing with burgers. Like I think every so often, if I'm guessing that it means my body's low on iron, I might like crave a burger, but mm -hmm. most of the time, eh, nope. I'm a, like I said, I'm an anti-American diet, I guess, with those two. <laughs> That's not a bad thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we didn't grow up eating fast food. And so like those things just never really were in my repertoire all that much. So yeah, it's probably for the best health wise, but it's a, something my husband always jokes like, what fast food do you like? You know, I'm like, well, I like Subway. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That even doesn't even count. Some some people wouldn't even count that as fast food. Mm -hmm. So that means you're healthy. Yeah. You're in good shape. That's right. Good. That's right. The <laughs> Subway should hire me to be there, like walk, you know, that. Anyway, long, long, long story. Too big of a tangent. <laughs> all right. Next question. Is it dark all day where you live all, is it dark all day long where you live in the winter? And that would depend on where you live in Alaska. So, you know, yeah. I'm right in Anchorage where we're pretty far south and it is not dark all day, but like I would say at the heart of winter when we've got the, the least sunlight, the kids go to school and their school doesn't start till nine. 
uh, well, my younger ones, their elementary school doesn't start till nine and it's pitch black when they get to Mm -hmm. school. It probably, the sun rises around 10 and then in the evening it's like 3.30 when I pick them up and it's dusk like it's yeah. getting dark fast like we, yeah, it's we pitch black stay, by four. Yeah. yeah if we want to stay in sled we can't during those days because yeah. it's just too late yeah yeah so, about the same where we four. are yeah the very darkest it's probably dark until just before 10 and mm-hmm. then you know again dark for sure by four and the other thing is the sun never gets high Right. Um, it's it's never more than maybe like five or 10 degrees above the horizon, even, you know, in the middle of the day. Um, so there's that. And then there are some places like I'm, I think Fairbanks for sure is more mm-hmm. extreme. And then there are some yeah. places in Alaska where, you know, it can be a couple weeks of actual darkness. But we, yeah, yeah the Hamptons and our family have never been that far north. No. And really, I kind of, and I don't know why, but I kind of like it in some ways. It feels kind of cozy and it's an enforced slowing down. It is. I just, I like something about it. So it's kind Mm -hmm. of neat, but it does. The one thing I don't like about it, your productive day gets very short in terms of what you can do outside. And, you know, if you have to do anything that involves Mm -hmm. daylight, Mm -hmm. it's really, really shortens your productive day. Whereas in the summer, I love the fact that if I need to do stuff outside, I could get up at the crack of dawn and it would be bright or oh, yeah. I could, you know, stay out until almost midnight and have plenty of light to do whatever. So Oh, for sure. Yeah. I had to take the puppy out a couple nights ago. It was past midnight. It wasn't dark. It's not going to get dark, dark. Technically we have a sunset, but it's still right. never dark. Um, the one thing that I don't like, I love that part of summer. I just wish that we could see the stars because oh, me too. in the winter, it's really too cold to stargaze. And in the summer, it never, it truly does not get dark enough to see stars. I mean, oh. even if you're up at 2 a.m. Um, so that's, that's Alaska climate for you. Yeah. Well, when we get into like the end stages of camping, like in September, that's mm-hmm. when we can see stars. Nice. And it's so funny because almost every year the kids are like, wow, I forgot you could see stars. Like, it's like they forget every year <laughs> that they're really, yeah. I know. Yeah. No, we haven't ever, like our kids don't really like, I don't think they've ever actually seen the Milky Way. Like they just right. don't know what that's like. Yeah. All right. What's our next question? What's the coldest temperature you've ever been in? Hmm. Okay, so we've seen 50 below a couple times. And I think maybe if you're pushing it, maybe like we've seen 55 below. But I would say the most that I'm absolutely convinced that I've been outdoors in is 50 below. Yeah, I think for me, it's 20s, early 20s, like 23, 25 at the most. Cause the, and that's mm-hmm. extreme for Anchorage. I mean, we yeah, typically Anchorage is a little more are moderate. really temperate. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, last winter when we got back from visiting people at Christmas time, when we were having our foundation work done, they, these guys were working and I think it was negative 11 was, was about the average temperature. Mm -hmm. And that was a big cold snap. I would say Anchorage in general, um, yeah, stays a lot more moderate than that, but, um, yeah, yeah, you've definitely, where you live is way colder. Mm -hmm. A lot of school districts, I don't think this is a statewide policy, but I think it's one that just local school districts adopt. And that's um, recess turns to indoor recess at 20 below. So as long as it's not, yeah, the book about that. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not, you know, colder than 20 below, there's still recess. Our church's policy when we lived, when my husband was a pastor, was church was canceled at 50 below um just because you know it there are safety concerns like if your car were to break down and you get stranded that's that's a dangerous temperature to be stuck out in Mm -hmm. um you know and cars don't run as well when it's that cold um you know i think i would i would be pretty scared at 60 below to me that feels just dangerous and I don't want to say unsurvivable because like Fairbanks dips to 60 below, I think kind of regularly. I mean, it's not unheard of there and people are fine. But to me, that's the temperature of like 40 below. No biggie. I've been out in 40 below dozens of times. 50 below I've seen before, but 60 below, man, that sounds scary to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, All cool. Right. Well, those are our ask me anything questions. That was fun. Yeah. Now what? Well, Do we want to go into our, I was thinking we could just kind of talk about the podcast and 
you know, I don't know. How long have we been on? We've been talking for a long time. We might need a part two. Do you want to do a part two? I think that'd be pretty fun. Let's do a part two where we talk a little, because we've got a lot of questions left about our podcast and our projects and. Okay. But, but so that we are um, edifying our listeners who come for prayer prayer, content, prayer related things. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot with two questions. What would you say are, what are some of, since we've been talking a lot about Alaska and it's so funny because I, I forget, like I do this with my readers too, like, you know, some ask me anything. And so many people want to know about Alaska. And I just kind of forget that it's um, exotic to so many people who haven't you know, lived here for decades. <laughs> um, so since we've been chatting mostly about Alaska, what would you say for people who want to pray for our state? Because it is, there's, it's a very different flavor than, you know, mainstream U.S. So what would you say are some of the unique spiritual needs of our state? Hmm. I would say one of them is one of the unique things that I've, well, it's not really unique, but with our church, what I've noticed is because Alaska, Alaskans are so serious about their summer, mm-hmm. there's a lot more mm-hmm. yep. in-state, but out-of-town travel. Camping and fishing and hunting yeah. is, is huge. And so even in the fall and the spring, there's hunting, but summer especially, mm-hmm. it's really hard to get help in ministries, like children's Trill. ministry. and Because everybody's out with their families enjoying the, be- like Alaska's gorgeous in the summer. Yeah. So, and with COVID, like there are still people that aren't coming back to church yet. And I know that our mm-hmm. ministry, our children's ministry in particular is really lacking in workers. So I could say just even COVID aside, that's mm-hmm. the, the seasonal nature of our state makes it um, definitely more of a challenge in the summer to get help for children's ministry and vacation Bible school and things mm-hmm. like that. That's mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, out of all 50 states, Alaska is actually the most unchurched. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. And then another aspect, I have no idea. Do you have a feel for about what percentage of Alaska is off the road system? Like what percent of the population? So, oh, no. you know, let's call it, I don't know, 10, 15%, maybe more. Um, if you take Anchorage and their big population out of it, it's way more. There's, there's lots of villages where you can only get to by plane. And um, so, you know, it's hard. Not all of them have a full-time pastor. The, you know, missionaries who do go out there, it's, it's stressful. Okay, so as, a, as an illustration, Scott and I, when we met, we were planning on becoming missionaries to Siberia, which is actually like... Um, Alaska was just going to be our stepping stone. It was going to be where we finished his Bible college train and got used to the cold. And then we were going to be off to Siberia. And that changed with um, the medical needs of the roads when our second son was born. But we knew like dozens of missionaries really, really, really well and all over the world. And by far, the missionary friends that we had that were um, living the most extreme in terms of just roughing it Mm -hmm. were in an Alaska village. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like once, so they were missionaries in one Alaska village. Her parents were missionaries in another Alaska village. They were going to fly to California to spend, uh, to California, (laughs) they fly to their grandparents to spend, that's where my grandparents are. That's probably what's in my head. What you're thinking. (laughs) <laughs> they were going to fly to um, this other village to spend Christmas with their mom and dad and the grandparents. Their power went out. The roads were too icy to fly. The um, power lines or the phone lines were down. So they, they couldn't get in touch with her parents. There was no way to contact her family. They just basically didn't show up <laughs> on Christmas Eve like they were planning to. And it took them like a week before they could even tell them, yeah, we're here. We're fine. Um, her mom, also a missionary in the, you know, in the bush, um, ended up delivering a baby. I believe it was like kind of with the help of like someone was just on the phone coaching her because it was too windy for the oh. flight place to land. Like wow. it is, it is really, really rough in it when you get out to the villages. And um, so I would say that is for sure a unique aspect of Alaska and Alaska ministry. Um and then, you know, another one, we've talked about it a couple times, even on the show, but, you know, Anchorage has a, a real hard homeless population. Yes. 
lots of crime were number one in churchlessness were also number one in abuse like it's it's pretty there's a lot of bad things um going on yeah <laughs> and i think there's definitely you know a lot of the national media has been focused on kind of a uh, like the African American population as the minority of the focus recently because of the mm -hmm. George Floyd death. Yes, yes. And everything. And which are discussions that need to happen. I absolutely want to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and we have and we we've definitely mm -hmm. are are behind, you know, wanting to to hear people that feel unheard of yes. all races. But right now, yeah, that is the focus and we're we're definitely in that conversation. At the same time, personally, I've also I've been very engaged in that conversation, but I've also been engaged just in my mind thinking about how there are some similar issues with the native population here mm -hmm. in Alaska, mm -hmm. because that is by far the largest. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like calling the Alaska natives a minority is almost insulting since they were here <laughs> you know I get what you're saying yeah and so mm -hmm. but if you want to call that a minority <clears throat> population mm -hmm. um just there the the Alaska Native community has a lot of issues that they are working through that mm -hmm. our government is trying to work with them as far as abuse and yeah. um, you know in the villages um poverty in Anchorage, poverty, and all of these oh, things. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. there are just, I would say, just um, just prayer for the Alaska Native population and, mm -hmm. and just for our state's ability to engage in meaningful dialogue to, to figure out how we can fix what, what's wrong because it's a huge, um, it's a huge issue. That, Definitely, that yeah. And another prayer. huge issue kind of paralleling what's going on in the lower 48, um, the village police officers, I forget the VSPO or yes. the safety patrol. Is that what it stands for? I think um, so. There are some villages that have no active police force. And those that do, there are lots of just bad stories of abuse of power and yes. lots of, yes, lots of needs for prayer in that that side of things as well so hey our uh, our fun behind the scenes ask me anything kind of turn into here's what's going on in alaska guys so maybe you want to close um i'll pray for our state our nation our world and then we can wrap it up and do more of our behind the scenes soon sounds good okay God, thank you so much for allowing our family in the Hamptons to live in this great state. Thank you so much for the beautiful, just beautiful nature of this state. Thank you for the bear and moose, and thank you for protecting us and our family on these close calls, and we pray that you would continue to do so. Um, God, we pray for missionaries who are in Alaska. We pray for all of these issues that we've brought up with homelessness and, and poverty and abuse. I just pray that you would be working to extend so much grace over this state, over our nation, just bring healing, bring reconciliation, bring unity, and bring your wonderful healing power and anointing to our state, to our nation, and to our world. Amen. Yes, amen. All righty. Well, please leave us a review if you have not done so yet. That absolutely helps us to get discovered by more listeners so that we can encourage even more women like you. And now let's end with our blessing and benediction. May God open doors of ministry to you today so that you may proclaim the word of the Lord courageously and effectively. May your speech always be seasoned with grace so that you may know how to answer anyone who asks about the great salvation you've been granted through Christ. May God use you today to open eyes that are blind, to proclaim freedom to captives. May you never be ashamed of the gospel, but instead proclaim it boldly to those who need to hear. And our benediction is from Psalm 134, verse 3. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Amen. <laughs>